How's it going guys? Travis here from Tackle Bros. And today I want to talk to you guys all things football jigs. So, um, this is going to be an interesting one. There's a bunch of different options. Skirted, non-skirted. We're going to go through, you know, how we fish them, some rod options, and then trailers and pairings. And when you really want to use this thing because the time is now to right around the corner for you guys up here that can't really fish yet. So, we're going to go over that today. And then also, I wanted to ask you guys, if we started releasing videos of, you know, some behind the scenes stuff, maybe we do these fishing trips quite a lot up here. Um, I'm pretty lucky that everybody that works with me is friends now. So, you know, my brother is the one that packages all your, your guys' orders that you guys order with us, and, and I appreciate that. My best friend growing up also works in the back, and he does all the counting. And then I'm, I've been lucky to become friends with the rest of the guys that, that we've ended up hiring. We all hang out and spend time together on weekends and go fishing and stuff. So let me know if you guys want to see some of that type of stuff, maybe just inside the industry stuff. I think that would be pretty cool. And if you do, that would be a good idea for, you know, when we start doing these third videos. And, and yeah, I'd like to put that type of stuff out. But for now, uh, let's focus on today's video, which is going to be, like I said, all things football jig. So a football jig is basically gets its name from the head shape there. So you can see it's shaped the way it's a football. This is more of an open water jig. Before that grass starts coming up, when you're fishing, you know, in and around rock, uh, sand, shell bed, it's really good for stuff like that. So because of the shape of the head, um, and this one in specific is an OSP hunch jig. So because of the shape of the head, this is going to come through all the all that cover really well. It's also going to stir up a lot of dust and um, dust and shell, and it's just going to create a little bit of commotion on the bottom when it's coming through. Why that's a good thing? Well, crayfish, you know, when they're kind of scooting around, you've probably seen them. They shoot those big clouds of dirt behind them. This is going to mimic that. Uh, it's also really great if you're fishing in and around rocks because that head shape it has a really hard time getting caught up. You know, it's it's not bulbous, it's not pointy, so there's nothing for it to get really caught into. It just kind of rolls up and over all those rocks. The key with this guy though, is bottom contact. So this is not a jig that you're gonna, you know, hop up and down and bounce off the bottom and you're not gonna stroke this jig. It's, it's nothing like that. This is a 100% bottom contact jig. And why I wanna talk to you guys about this one in specific is because this is really the key time of year when it's a big player. Right now, all the grass is down, you know, the fish are kind of in that pre-spawn up where we are. You know, some of you guys are getting into that post-spawn and this is still applies for that. This is when the fish are slow. They're not really chasing that well. They're just looking for an easy meal, trying to get their energy back up. And that's when this thing really shines. The other big thing about this is right now, the grass is down. It's not grown up. There's no algae on the bottom. The, gr the ground is pretty clean. So this can come through pretty easily without getting a bunch of shit on it. That's why, you know, in the spring and into the fall, those are the two key times when this is a big player. Now, don't get me wrong, it works year round. And this also doubles as, you know, another, like you can, you can flip this jig, it's gonna be fine. You can, you know, you can, you can stroke this jig if you want to, it's gonna be fine. But the real key is that bottom contact. With this jig, you're always gonna go, this is a weird one, so you're always gonna wanna go as light as you possibly can because if you have a big weight hanging out of the fish's mouth, it's gonna cause leverage to the fish. So that weight hanging out of the fish's mouth, you know, when your line goes slack for whatever reason, you know, they jump out of the water. That weight's just kinda hanging there, pulling against it with the gravity. But you also wanna go heavy enough where you keep that bottom contact because without bottom contact this is useless this is not this is a technique that really need you need to be feeling that bottom you know when you're dragging through you know those that muckier stuff and then you hit that shell bed you can really pick that up with these jigs that's why we like them and fish them so much this one in specific these i'm going to talk to you about my five favorite i couldn't really land on i tried to do threes but i couldn't really land on three there's five that are my favorite one that's an ultimate standout, and then we're gonna talk trailers, and then we'll go into rods and reels and line and all that stuff. So this one right here, this is gonna be the Raid Footmaster. So this is a really dope one. And then we're also going to have the, also, we're gonna talk about two different types, types, skirted and not skirted, because there's certain times when that non-skirted is just elite next level, and you could put some really cool trailers on it. So we'll get to that in a minute. The other one is going to be the Evergreen Professional Football Jig. And then we are going to have, I don't have this one in the package with me, but because I thought I had a bunch down here, but they're on my boat. So this one is going to be the Nishine Lure Works um, Finesse Football Jig. And then, one of the most amazing football jigs is going to be the OSP Hunts jig, which is the one that I've had in my hand for most of this video already. These are on the finesse side of football jigs. 
For me, I like to throw a smaller profile jig. The crawl up here aren't crazy big, and like that's that's really what I'm trying to imitate. These ones are great. They're not really intimidating, and the trailers that I like pair up with these. If I need it to be a little bit bigger, I'll, I'll generally just upsize the trailer a little bit. Creates a little bit of bulk, but for me, I like the smaller size of football jigs. This one, for instance, this is one that in the last couple years is is my favorite. Um, so this is that Nishine Lure Works, and this one right here is paired up with that Great Lakes Finesse Snack Craw. Unreal. Um, this thing comes through cover great. The skirting material, you can tell, you can see it's kind of crinkled. Uh, it has a really nice pulse in the water. Um, the hook is amazing. I'm not sure what kind of hook this is. He usually uses between own, owner Gami and Ichikawa hooks, so I'm assuming it's one of those. And then, yeah, that's that's that Great Lakes Finesse Snack Craw. Ultra popular, it has that, that buoyancy in the claws, so it's gonna set up nicely. So as you can see on this football head, it has a nice flat spot here. Generally, when you're dragging it back, it's gonna be sitting in this motion. Because of that, you're gonna have amazing hookup. The, when, they, when they eat it, the hook's generally gonna you know, penetrate right into the top of the mouth, which is ideal and perfect for what you wanna do. Now, the OSP Hunch Jig is another favorite of mine. I like this one because it has the finesse style skirting. They cut half the skirting short, um, I also like this one because they have the weight stamped actually on the head as you can see there So this is a half ounce 14 gram and this one has a weed guard when I'm gonna use this one And this is also gonna be similar to the uh, uh, Footmaster so these two for me are when I'm fishing around that sparse grass You know when you have rock piles and there's grass growing in and out of it Which is a phenomenal time to throw these not uh, again if I'm maybe on a, a grass line or just off the grass or there's that sparse grass growing in and around a flat. These two with the weed guards, that's when I'm throwing these 100 out of 100 times. With these two jigs, you'll see there is a substantial head difference size. So um, this one's gonna be made of lead. This one is gonna be made of tungsten. Now, when I'm using the tungsten is when I wanna get a little bit more sensitivity out of it. Also downsizing the head, it's gonna help with the fall rate a little bit with the density of the tungsten. You know, generally if I throw a three quarter ounce in this size, it's gonna be about the same size as the half ounce in this guy. This one, for instance, I like to use when I'm ledge, more ledge fishing. So if I have a steep drop off, I really like to use the Footmaster. And then for general, I'll use the the hunts. Then from there, there's two different styles. Well, there's actually a bunch of different styles. You can get into the wobble heads or the, you know, the swing heads, biffle heads, whatever you want. And then you can have the skirted and the non-skirted. So this is a non-skirted K-Tech uh, finesse football jig. This is the Nishine. I like to use this one when I'm going to use a different style of trailer other than a craw trailer. This is cool because you can actually imitate whatever you really want. Um, the skirt in general is nice because it gives bulk and it, it can entice those bigger fish. But let's say you're just in an area where there's a ton of bait fish and there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of crawfish around there. So what you can do is you can take this non-skirted version and you can thread it up and then you now have a bottom contact swim bait, which is, which is pretty cool. So if you ever see a lot of the, you know, as the bait fish get a little bit bigger or if you're around suckers or anything like that, they're always kind of eating off the bottom. This is a great imitator for that, especially in and around rocks. So I'll generally use the one without skirting material when I want to use something that's not directly trying to uh, imitate a craw. Or there are a couple trailers, um, the snack craw again. This is just a great little craw imitator, and it's not too it's not too uh, intimidating, I would say. A lot of guys will throw it on their ball head, but I actually prefer it this way. So snack craw on a finesse football head. Again, amazing for coming through the rock. It's amazing coming through shell bed. It's gonna blow up a little bit of dust on the bottom. This is a really good option for something if you don't want to use a skirt or if you're using something as as I said, like not specifically a craw bait type. Okay, so let's talk about trailers that I like to use on the football jigs. Um, I try to keep a minimal, but I actually like to use a lot of different trailers. Some are just different profiles, bulks, etc. But let's run through them really quick. This is going to be the OSP Doe Live Craw. Supernatural looking, uh, amazing craw bait. This is one of my favorite jig trailers for all jigs actually. So Doe Live Craw. Then we're gonna have the Raid Igu Chunk. So this is in the three and a half inch. 
Uh, this is one that I like to use when I need to cause a little bit more commotion. These are big heavy claws, so they're gonna move a lot of water. Most of these are gonna be pretty universal jig trailers, so you, they can go on, you know, your regular flipping jigs, um, but they also work really good with, with the football jigs, obviously. So this is gonna be the Reigns Bubble Craw. I like this one when I'm fishing specifically in heavy rock areas. These claws just come up and flow over everything really nicely. It looks really natural. So this is a great one from Rains. And then this little guy. So this is the Nishine one that we were talking about earlier. So this is the Nishine Finesse Football. But this is with the Great Lakes Finesse Snack Crop. So another really great one that's ultra compact. This is a nice little compact one basically. If you're downsizing a little bit, this one's cool. The claws on this, again, neutral buoyancy, so they're gonna float up. Uh, yeah, this is just a great combo. And then if I need some bulk, if I need to, you know, make it a little bit bigger, say I'm catching, you know, two, three pounders, but every once in a while I'm catching a big one and I know the big ones are in the area, I will go to a bellow shad. So this is a 3.8 inch G-Crack bellow shad. This is on the Evergreen football jig. This is a great pairing. Those are the trailers that I really like to use and they're, they're, they're amazing. Um, you're not gonna go wrong with any of them. I do really, really, really love the OSP though. That, that Doe Life, that Doe Life Craw is amazing. And then the Reigns, I think would be my second favorite. So before we get the rods, this is also a great one. I just remembered this is why I don't have it because it's actually tied on my rod right now. So that's gonna be the Doe Life Beaver. So I'll just take the body, I'll pinch a big chunk off of it and then it pairs up really nice, especially with the Nishine one, so. There's that. For rods, I have three suggestions for you and you can kind of figure out the styling of the rod from there. So the first one is gonna be the, in the P5 series, this is gonna be the X-Bytes. So this is a seven foot two, F5 and a half, so a heavy power. Uh, this is gonna be an extra fast tip. I have this paired up with a seven one Metanium and 14 pound Sniper. So that's the Sunline Super Sniper. Another one that I like is gonna be the Bottom Contact 2 rod from Daiwa in the Steez lineup. So 7.5, medium heavy. This is a fast action. And then another cool one would be in like the Tatula Elite lineup, the Corey Johnson rod. So that's gonna be another 7.5, medium heavy, the soft stick bait football jig rod. Those would be three suggestions for that. You can go anywhere from a seven to one to an eight to one in the real category, I would say, and then for line, if you're trying to go really, really deep, maybe 12 pound, if you can get away with it, run 16, but 14 pound is gonna be your bread and butter. If you guys are in the, you know, that northern part of the country, this is gonna be an amazing technique for you guys, especially, like I said, spring and fall. That's where this thing really shines. When that grass is down, the water's a little bit colder, the fish are a little bit slower. This is the time of year to give this football jig a try. So definitely tie one on, go catch a big one.